What is going on YouTube? I hope all is well. Here it is, the whole tamale, the big stinky cheese, the moment you have all been waiting for, or not. Um, <clears throat> what we're looking at here is a schematic of the amp that I showed to you in the introduction video to this series. Um, I have struggled with this video a bit. I've had about three different iterations of it, and I just kept on realizing that I was basically going into information overload. Um, what we're going to do in this video is exponentially increase the difficulty in which you will implement um, or, you know, uh, start to create um, or, you know, your your idea of an amplifier. Uh, this is mine. This is my flagship amp right here. Um, it is a, it's an evolution of, a, of several different designs that I've come up with over the, over the years. Um, and this is the one I settled on. The history of this amp is pretty simple, really. Um, I, several years ago, wanted a, an 18 watt Marshall. Um, I was kind of digging that whole vibe and I, ordered a kit. When the kit came, I built it just like it said to build it, and I liked it. It was it was cool. It definitely had the 18 watt thing going for it, but it was kind of a one trick pony. It did one or two things very well, but that was about it, and I wasn't really gelling with it. I wanted something a little bit different. It was not exactly pedal friendly. Um, it just wasn't what I was looking for in the grand scheme of things. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to kind of just build my own version of it or um, and that's kind of how we ended up to this um, this schematic here is kind of a hybrid if you will um, I'm using a parallel triode for the input which is kind of more popularized I would say by matchless uh, I've worked on and have played several matchless chieftains over the year and they are famous for this circuit right here with the the parallel triode, they have several of these kind of cascaded in a row. Um, I think a total of like four or five of them or something like that. Um, but in either case, I, I kind of liked that idea, so I gave it a shot and I, I was I was happy with it. Same with the bass control here. Um, Chieftain uses something similar to this and I really, I kind of dig it. Um, I like it because it's a, a non-loss type circuit. It's not shunting anything to ground, so you're not actually losing anything. Um, same with the high cut um, over here. It's not really shunting anything away to ground. It's using common mode rejection to kind of get rid of the highs that you don't want to be there. Um, it's subtle, it's nice, and it's effective. Um, and it's not really in the signal path, which is what I kind of like about it as well. <clears throat> But uh, you'll also notice that, you know, obviously Vox AC15s and AC30s use a high cut circuit like this. Uh, the Vox circuit uses a uh, the 220K uh, grid leak resistors for the power tubes. So it's kind of a conglomeration of several different amplifiers kind of put into one with my own values and my own kind of twists on them. But it originally started as an 18 watt design and some of these values, especially in the power supply here, uh, remain from that original iteration when I was creating this amplifier. Um, to preface this a little, or preface this a bit, if you build this schematic exactly as it is right now, it will function, but it will not be right. Um, so do keep that in mind. This is not what I am currently using to build the amplifier that I showed you in the introduction. Um, I have a slightly different standard that I build to now, and then I adjust from there. Um, this is just the prototype schematic that I used initially when I was building it, and uh, I just I just haven't updated it yet. Um, but this will get you kind of on your own pace to getting somewhere, I guess, if you will, if you wanted to try to build this guitar amp. Uh, <clears throat> so some of these values down here are obviously stock values um, from the original 18 watt Marshall. Um, I don't think some of them are right, but I'm not going to get too deep into it. Um, one thing I can tell you, just some tips that I think are helpful. Um, I suggest using a double pull single throw switch for the power switch. Uh, that will break both the line and the neutral. 
um, instead of just the line. The way it is drawn here is the American standard of electrical code to build an amplifier in the Americas. Um, it is functional, it's cheap, and it, it does work, but uh, I think the better method is to use the European standard, which is to have a double pull switch that breaks both the line and the hot, or not the line and the hot, the, the line and the neutral, um, lifting them both out of circuit, making it so that there's absolutely no way anything in this circuit can become hot. Um, I do suggest with the EZ81s and perhaps any other one where you're just going to have uh, a tube rectifier to implement the IN4007s this way. These are here more or less to just protect the transformer and the tube a little bit. Um, if the tube happens to drop aside here and shorts a dead short, this kind of takes over and does that roll for it, if you will. Um, although it will not uh, function 100% the way it is, at least it can kind of help protect things if it goes into some sort of a meltdown. So this is just a cautionary measure here. Um, it's cheap to implement and uh, it's functional. It does not do anything to the power supply. The EZ81 the is still where all the work is being done here because it is, you know, la later in, in the signal path. Uh, you'll notice that I did not use a standby switch. This amp topology does not require one, does not need one, should not have one. Um, there are others that agree with me on that, and there are probably others that completely disagree with me on that. This amp does not need a standby switch. Do not put one in there. It does and will cause problems, especially if you implement it where it was originally put. Uh, initially, it was placed right here um, between the, the rectifier and the first node. The problem with that is if you lift this up with the switch, all of these capacitors and stuff here can um, drain their voltage out. And as they do so, if the amp is on and you go to turn the switch on, right, the standby switch, as far as the tube rectifier and everything else downstream of it is concerned, these are all a dead short. <clears throat> and that is not good. It will cause the rectifier to arc it may even cause your uh, mains fuse to blow. So I would suggest, at least in this topography here, to not use a uh, standby switch. If you're going to implement a standby switch, find another modern amplifier, um, something more like the JCM800. You can see how they implement their switch after the first node um, and in between the, the first, uh, well, prior to the first node, but in between another reservoir cap. Um, that is a much better way to do it. Uh, again, find that somewhere else. Uh, but if you're gonna build this amp, build it as I have it here. I put the mute switch over here. Um, I, I implemented, it, implemented it as a way to quiet the amp down so you can tune. I don't use, uh, I don't use uh, like the, the floor style tuners where you can mute the signal going in. I use um, you know like the, uh, the standard tuners that are on your guitar that you put on like the headstock or whatnot. The, the, the sharks I guess they're called or something. They're snarks or something. But uh, I use those so in order to make the amp quiet when I'm playing instead of rolling down the volume I'll just hit the switch. Um, it's quick and easy. It's silent. Dead silent as a matter of fact. There are zero pops. Um, I don't have it here. It shows it here. It will work there. It will do just fine there. But I moved it over here next to the uh, master volume and in between that and the high cut. Um, I found it to just be a more practical place to put it because that's where it existed anyway on the layout of the you know faceplate of the amp. So you are looking at more or less what is the design of the amp that we saw in the introduction video. In another video or so, I'm going to show what that amp sounds like to hopefully drive some more interest because I'm sure some of you are like, yeah, big whoop. I see a bunch of freaking numbers and letters, but doesn't mean anything to you. Um, I'm not really trying to get you to care at all about what the heck it is I'm showing you here. More, I'm just trying to show you that you yourself can build whatever the heck you want if you can imagine it and can utilize this software. Speaking of which, this software is Schemit. It is provided by, for free, DigiKey Electronics. Um, I will put a link in the doobly-doo, the description box down below. Uh, it is free. 
it just requires that you sign up uh, and create an account. Um, you can see that I have here. Um, definitely worth it. It's a nice program to be able to create schematics with. It will tell you sometimes if what you're trying to do is bad juju. Um, but you can kind of see here how I've got some star grounds stuff starting to go on. Obviously all of these would eventually tie into one spot. I got the chassis safety ground for the plug over here, the fuse, the switch, all that stuff. So you can kind of see how this all lays out. What you can do is take a, a circuit that maybe you want to try to recreate or modify and then you can build it in this software here and tweak things however you would like to in order to create uh, your own you know your own amplifier so let's show you kind of how this uh, software works uh, I'm going to open up a new blank project and what you're probably going to notice over here I'm going to show you real quick just because Oh no, good, I'm glad it didn't do that, that's great. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> I thought it would, but it didn't, so we're gonna move on then. So, let's start from the input now. Oh, there it goes, it updated finally. So, you'll notice down here in the My Favorites section, that's in the user library, you'll see that there's a few of these things here that exist, and they got the yellow star. Those are starred, um, if you go into the, uh, let's uh, go connectors here, all right. So you got all these different connectors and whatever ones you, you use the most, which we're going to use this one here, uh, it will, you save that with the, with the star there. And then when you go to the user library, it'll update. And now that's, will be there. You're going to use a lot of the same components for most of the amplifier. So it's helpful to have this here. Um, I only recently started doing this as I was practicing to do this for you, and I'm still just rambling the hell on. I'm going to get moving. All right. Most designers and builders will start with the power supply first. The problem with that is, is that you probably, I'm going to go out on a limb here, that you are probably not here because you know how to design and build guitar amplifiers and know how to, to use, you know, all the Ohm's Law and all that stuff to actually even design it to begin with. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you are here because you are learning this. You're a beginner, an intermediate uh, electronics guy, and you just want to build a guitar amplifier but don't know where to start. I'm here to try to help you get to that point where you can, can do that. However, most of you are probably going to take an existing design and modify it or uh, take an existing amplifier and implement whatever will work from the style of amp that it came from. Obviously, you're not buying custom transformers that have all the voltages the way that you want. Generally, you're gonna get transformers for say an 18 watt or a Fender Champ or a Fender Deluxe Reverb or you know an orange tiny tear or something like that. And that transformer is gonna kind of dictate a lot of how your topology is gonna end up. And it, Basically, you're just going to copy the um, schematic that is used for that particular amp, and then you can adjust the values from there to suit your needs. Uh, that is my suggestion if you're kind of starting out. Uh, obviously, I'm not a big fan of just copying other people's designs. Try to be original, but it's very difficult to be. Um, but start there and play from there. Um, this I'm here to just try to help you get to that point where you can get an amplifier built and working, and then you can go from there. So, we're gonna start from the input. Um, if I can get it to select, there we go. So yeah, we're gonna start from the input and then go towards the power supply. Um, I'm not gonna build an entire circuit here, I'm just gonna kinda brief over it just to show you how this kinda works so you can do it for yourself. All right, so we've got our input. Next, we need a triode. The search bar up here is your friend, triode. Put that in, you're gonna to come to thing, not user library. Um, please. There we go, vacuum tubes. Now, we're gonna build it just kinda of like the other schematic I had showed, so we're gonna do a parallel triode for the first stage. So, we're gonna do the dual triode, du dual triode, dual anode, all right. So we've got that, we're probably gonna need a little more space, let's bring this out a little bit. Now we need to go to the grid leak. The idea for how you do the resistors is the order in which it touches the signal from the input on. 
Um, some of them will also go the other way where they start with R1 at the power supply. It doesn't really matter as long as you pick a standard to go with it. You don't want to have R1 over here and then R2 down here in the power supply. Um, you want R1, R2, you want it to try to keep them going in a flow or in, in an order. So in this case, I'm going to go with what touches the signal flow first. So in this case, we're going to put one here. We're going to go to user library. I think I have, nope, we got to get rid of this. Uh, I think we do, yep, general resistor, there we go. So we're going to take this guy, R1, it's going to be our grid leak. Yeah, right in there ought to work. We're going to give it a value of 1 meg, so 1m, so that'll update. Then we need to copy this, or you can pull it from over here if you want, but I'm going to copy it, so we're going to go here, control C to copy, control V to paste. We need to rotate that, so go to object properties, rotate. Uh, I want it to go the other direction like that, and then we can take it and move it over, so we'll go down here, reselect. And we'll put it right, right there is fine. Connect that to the grid of the tube. I think we're gonna need yet a little more space, so we'll select all that and just scooch it over a little bit. <clears throat> we'll take this one here, scooch it over a little bit. Now we can take this, connect it to the input, and then this we can connect to that. And you'll notice there's a dot here. In a schematic, if you see two lines intersect each other and there's no dot, that means they do not connect. They are not connected. If you see two lines intersect and there is a dot, that means that they do connect. So keep that in mind, all right? Uh, R2, um, our grid leak resistor, or grid stopper resistor, excuse me, is not gonna be one meg. It'll be 10K. So let's give it a value of 10K. There we go, let's update that. And then we need to connect the um, input of this uh, circuit. Uh, escape, please. Because this tube is in parallel, we need to make the grids connect to each other. One of the cumbersome things about this particular um, software is it's not very, uh, intuitive with some of the parts here it uh, uh, I don't know it's, it's sometimes it's just a pain in the butt to get it to do what you want it to do I need it to go a little further over oh my goodness control Z we're going back we're going back abort abort <clears throat> all right <clears throat> let's just chart let's start from here we'll go up and over and then back down there we go that's what I wanted it to do all right <clears throat> drawing these lines is sometimes that's the most cumbersome part of this program um, so do be mindful of that it's sometimes it's best to wait until after you get some of these values done and then just create a box around them and then join the rest of them in um, sometimes if they don't connect very well like this tube doesn't line up exactly in line with this one trying to get them to, to connect dots there sometimes can be a pain in the butt all right <clears throat> so we got that so now we need to do the same thing for the anodes here so we're gonna draw uh, box a little bit further up and if you uh, left click it'll change the direction in which the uh, line will go just as an FYI now we need some resistors for the um, cathode so we'll put that there let's go down one there we go and then we're gonna need a polarized capacitor I already have it saved so we'll just drag this over Polarized capacitor is what you need for this position here for the cathode bypass. So do be mindful of that. We'll go to object properties. We'll flip that horizontally. As far as a value, let's give it a value of 25 UF. I go lowercase u, uppercase F to denote that. And if you want, you can put the voltage value. Um, this particular one needs to be at least a 50 volt. Uh, 25 volt will work as well, but I suggest going 50 volt. So we'll save that there. Um, you can click and move that if you need. There we go. Now we can connect those to there. So we'll connect the cathodes to these. And then these two are going to end up going together in a moment. But first, what we're going to do is create a box around this. So we're going to go dink. We'll come down to here. We'll go over to here and up to there. And then we're going to do the same here. We're going to go there to there. Now this creates a shorting jack right here. 
So when the jack has nothing plugged into it, it will short the signal out, making the stage go silent or cutting it off, making it not work. Um, and of course, as the input jack goes in, it will lift this up off of this switching jack and opening it up, making it work like it's supposed to. So now what we can do is connect these to ground, uh, or what will become ground. We haven't gotten that far yet, but you'll see there that they all kind of connect together. Um, now let's see here. This is where sometimes this program is frustrating. Uh, what you think of being ground is not necessarily what they think of being ground. If you punch in GND, which is the abbreviation for ground, <laughs> it will pop up. Um, it is goofy. It's going to be under schematic symbols, and the internet, of course, is deciding that it doesn't want to play right now. There we go. It's in ports. Who would have thunk that this would be a port? I don't know why, but that's what they name it as. So if you put in ground, you will not find this. Um, obviously, ports is kind of not the word that you need to wor uh, worry about, but ground and abbreviated to GND or earth, if you want to be that, will also work. So we'll put that guy, uh, that looks pretty center. We'll put him right there. And then we'll take this guy and connect it there. So now this tube is almost ready to work here. Let's take this guy, copy it. We're gonna put one up here. We're gonna paste that. And right there is good to me. We'll connect that to the anodes there. Uh, let's give this a value of 100K. There you go. You can also put the wattage of these resistors. I suggest one watt for anything that you can find in the in the general circuit area here. As you get into the power supply, obviously you need five watts and two watts, and other areas need you know somewhere between two watts and five watts. Uh, three watts will work in some areas as well. But for the major portion of the preamp side of things, uh, one watt resistors is plenty. <clears throat> but I digress, let's go on to the next stage. We need to, let's go to the user library and let's see what we got here. We want a non-polarized capacitor for our coupling cap. We are going to rotate this. So we'll rotate that like so. Let's move it up, if you don't mind. Let's go up, thank you, right there, yes. All right. So we'll connect that one to the plate, like so. <clears throat> what value do we want to give this one? Let's give it a value of 0 0.01 UF. All right, there we go. Uh, I don't like where that one's at, so we'll move it down there. Okay, so we're going to build another stage now, but I want it to be just a single triode. Uh, you'll notice here that we've got two triodes in a single envelope. This would be one whole 12AX7 in this position. But I want to do just a triode, a single one. Um, so let's find that and search, please. Vacuum tubes, there we go. So dual triode, that is a no-go. There we go, right down here, triode. This is what we want. So we may want to save that to our favorites list so we can use it again later. So this guy, I'm going to go ahead and move it down here, right in there. We're going to implement a volume and we're going to also put in a tone control here in just a moment. So first let's take a tone control, let's get that, or a master volume, excuse me. Um, to do that, we're going to need a variable resistor. And that is what a potentiometer is. I don't think if you put in potentiometer, yeah, no, you'd have to have variable. So. There's that. Let's actually save that as our favorite. So we're going to put this guy like right there. Okay. Now, this is going to be our volume pot. Let's give it a value of 500K. And then let's denote that it is audio taper. So we're going to give it a capital A to denote that it is audio taper. Um, obviously, a linear taper probably won't work that well in this position. So let's move this over just a little bit. Give it some space, and then we're going to connect the output of the variable resistor or the potentiometer to the grid. Uh, that arrow is the center lug. That is what actually varies the voltage going to the preceding part. So this is lug one, lug, lug two, lug three. Lug three goes to ground. Okay. 
we are going to connect this to the coupling capacitor so that it all makes one circuit there. Um, so we got that. Now let's take another one of these. <coughs> Excuse me, goodness. Let's copy this. So control C, control V. Let's move this over uh, right in there will work. Let's give it a different value. It is not going to be 500 Ka. Let's make it one meg. And I actually spell out meg for that. And then we're going to go linear for linear pot. That is what the tone, uh, a tone pot works best with. Um, although an, an analog or <laughs> analog audio taper pot will work. It works better. It's smoother with a linear taper. So we'll just do that. So that'll go there. <clears throat> and then we're going to connect the wiper to the signal path because we want to vary this output down to ground, which we are going to need another capacitor for that. We're going to use a non-polarized one. That'll go in there somewhere. Let's move it down so it's square with those guys. We'll connect that up. Boop. And then let's give this a value of 0.022. UF. 0.022 will work, 0.047 will work. Uh, there are obviously, several other values will work as well. But uh, for now, all we need to, to do is pick a number and we'll go from there. I want to rotate that so it goes to the other side. So we're going to do this object properties, horizontal. There we go. Let's uh, get another. Uh, resistor here for the RA or the anode of that tube. So we're going to get control C over here, control V, and we're going to go up right in there, connect that to the anode of that triode. And then we need a, uh, oh, we never did give this one a value, did we? Let's give this one a value of 1.5K. We jumped ahead of ourselves there. Um, so this is the cathode resistor. Let's copy this. Control C, Control V here. There we go. So I think this will go right in there. Yep. Okay. We'll connect that one down to there. All right. <clears throat> We're almost done with this stage here. What we need to know at this point is that you see how everything on this half of the coupling capacitor is connected to its own reference ground over here. We're starting to create our star ground here. What, what it is is what we want is that each section or each stage of amplification kind of has their own ground reference. So in this case here, the signal that goes to the grid of this tube needs to have its ground reference to the cathode of that tube. So this coupling capacitor uh, blocks all the DC from this stage from this stage. So there's no DC difference between these two, or there's, uh, that I didn't say that correctly. Uh, there is no DC between these two different stages, which means that they're decoupled from each other because of this, which means that anything that touches the grid of this tube should go to its own ground reference at the cathode of that tube. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a little box. It goes from here over and goes to there. So now we've enveloped everything that's in this particular tube's signal path to its own reference point. So we're going to take the ground from this guy and put it there. And then we're going to take this guy, we're going to control C, copy it, and we'll paste it over here. That looks to be close to center. That looks pretty good right there. And then we'll connect this together. There you go. So now we've got two stages of tube uh, done up. So we need another coupling capacitor. So let's, uh, where's my favorites? There we go, we can just use this one. So we'll pull this guy out. We'll give it a rotate. So object properties, rotate. There we go. Take this guy, let's move him up here, cause why not? And then we'll connect them to the anode and we'll give it a value of 0.01 because why not? All right, so, uh, escape. Okay, I don't like that there, I want it there. Yeah, I don't even want it there, I want it further over. There we go, okay. And I didn't even put O-U-F. All right, so, 
And then, ugh, it's going to make me work, I tell you. It's going to make me work. All right. So we've gotten through two stages. We've gotten a tone pot introduced. Let's uh, let's add in a treble peaking uh, circuit here. So we'll put a resistor here, or capacitor, excuse me, there. Um, let's see here. I like it there, but I want the object to be on the other side. And then what we're going to do is connect it to there. And then from here to, uh, if you wouldn't mind, there. Um, I think this needs to then move out. There we go. Much preferred. Let's give this a value of 120 uh, picofarad. 120 pf. I don't like that there. That will not work. Right there will work though. So this is now creating a treble peaking circuit or a treble bleed circuit. What this allows is for high frequencies to sail over the top of this resistor, which only works when this. Uh, pot, gain pot, is turned down. So as the pot is turned down, more and more high frequencies will sail over the top of the resistor and fly on into this next gain stage. But as you turn the pot up, remember we talked about in the other video that it basically creates a dead short between these two points, basically making this non-functional. Okay? Um, this obviously just shunts frequencies to ground. 0.022, so we put the variable portion of it on the wiper here. Um, you can wire it the other way if you want. It'll make it work in the opposite direction. And the way that it is currently, as you turn the volume up, it brings this potential closer to ground, if you will, right? And making this become more part of the circuit, which means it will shunt more and more frequencies to ground. So this one will work kind of like a high cut, whereas you turn the knob up, it actually cuts more and more and more highs out of the signal and as you turn it down or wind it down this direction it uh, allows more and high, more highs to get through so you can reverse the wiring of this if you want um, basically putting this on the wiper and connecting that up to the top and it'll make it work in a more uh, more like a treble pot normally does on a guitar um, I, I kind of like doing it this way in some instances, and, and other times I like doing it the other way. I, I, it's a matter of personal taste, I guess, if you will. But this will function as you would like it to function. Um, I'm going to stop here in terms of building out the amplifier. I think you got the idea. Um, real quick, I just want to touch kind of on the power aspect of it, because there are some different things you're going to use. Here's a power plug, generic, maybe not the one I would normally use. We'll rotate that a couple times to go the right direction. Uh, sometimes I hate how it works. Alright, so there we go. Now obviously this one's going to have a different ground lug. Um, escape please. Um, and I don't have it saved here, so we're going to... You saw it earlier, so we're going to hit GND. Um, get out of this one. Schematic symbols please. Ports, yes. Chassis ground. It's going to end up with this type of a connection here. Um, it is important to utilize the different ones that it can have. This is the safety ground. It goes directly to the chassis. There is going to be another chassis ground elsewhere in the chassis, uh, in which case all of these ports, or ports, yeah, listen to me already, all of these points here will then connect to the, a single point within the amplifier. Um, What's interesting is if I were to draw in two lines to tie these grounds together and then run them to another port like this, the chassis ground, it would actually give me a warning, say it might create fireworks. Scheme it is kind of cute in some instances, but uh, it would be okay. It would not f cause a fire or anything like that. Um, all of these points here at some point would have to come to a single point in the amplifier that goes to chassis ground. It must. It has to. Um, but we're creating a star ground, and all these points will eventually connect to one point. So that is this. If you can do this, you can do... Let's open up the other one here. Uh, working version. No, nope, don't need to save it. If you can do that, you can build this. So imagine all of these will eventually go... All of these will eventually go to another point on the chassis. Not this particular one, but another point together. Um... And we'll show more of that actually when we get into the next 
video that we're going to do, which is actually turning this into a layout. There is another software program I'm going to show you. It's called DIY Creator. It's another free software that allows you to uh, build layouts. Uh, again, it can be cumbersome. It's not. Uh, it's probably a little more cumbersome than this software here, to a degree. It's it's just the learning curve. That's really all it is. The more you play with this, the easier it gets. I hope that this explains a lot to you. I hope that this allows you to play around with your ideas and create virtual circuits, if you will, that you can then print this off and go into your garage and rebuild or build completely a new amplifier. But uh, take care. I, if you like, you know, if you like this video, subscribe and hit the like button. Stick around. We got more to come. Uh, I, I promise you soon. We will show what this particular amp sounds like, and uh, take care. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.